We are now days away from elections in Bangladesh. It's the first big one of this year, 2024, it's, and it's no ordinary election. The opposition is not contesting this time, so Sheikh Hasina is all set to win again. It's a question of how many seats she will get. But tonight we're not focusing on the politics. We're focusing on a new issue here, the issue of artificial intelligence and elections. Apparently, it's a problem in Bangladesh. AI is being used to spread fake news. Take a look at this. U.S. Embassy statement in favor of Odhi Kaur's Adalur proved their involvement in the incident. After Hefazat mayhem in 2013, Adalur Rahman spread out riots in the country by disseminating false information. Now the U.S. Embassy's press release and tweet for Odhi Kaur and Adalur prove that they were also involved in the May 5 violence. That was not a real news anchor. That was an AI-generated avatar. You can hire him for $24 per month. That's all, $24 a month. You can make him say whatever you like. In this case, the AI anchor was talking about riots in Bangladesh. Do you know who he's blaming for it? The United States. Now, Washington has meddled in Dhaka. They have lectured Bangladesh's politicians and poll body. But starting riots is a stretch. It's speculation at best. Dangerous fake news at worst. And this is just one example. Multiple deep fakes and AI clips are circulating in Bangladesh. One of them features an opposition leader. His name is Tariq Rehman. He's a member of the Bangladesh Nationalist Party. In this video, he says the party should be quiet about Gaza, basically not criticize Israel's war. And that's very controversial in Bangladesh. This is a Muslim country with firm pro-Palestine sentiments. So being silent on Gaza is political suicide in Bangladesh. Then why did Tariq Rahman say it? Well, that's the thing. He did not. The video was a deep fake uploaded on Facebook. It's now been taken down by the platform. But you see the problem here. AI tools are cheap and easily available. With their help, spreading dangerous fake news is easier than ever. And this problem is not limited to Bangladesh. We've seen deep fakes of Ukraine's president asking soldiers to surrender. Of the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, calling for troop mobilization and U.S. President Joe Biden touching children inappropriately. All this in a non-election year. So imagine the situation in 2024. Dozens of elections are slated to be held this year. Chances are AI will play a big role. The question is, what will that role be? You can use AI to extend the reach of your campaign, yes. Maybe address more gatherings and events, or improve your campaign videos, or maybe release a speech from jail. That's what Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan did. He used an audio deep fake to address his supporters. You can also use AI to make attack ads, like this one published by the Republicans in the US. This just in, we can now call the 2024 presidential race for Joe Biden. This morning, an emboldened China invades Taiwan. Financial markets are in free fall as 500 regional banks have shuttered their doors. Border agents were overrun by a surge of 80,000 illegals yesterday evening. Officials closed the city of San Francisco this morning, citing the escalating crime and fentanyl crisis. Clearly, you can do a lot with AI. There's a flip side too. Fake speeches and fake news. They can make or break political campaigns, which is why it is important to understand the challenges. The first one is regulation. Should AI be allowed in campaigns at all? It's a question that the US is grappling with. The Biden campaign has set up a special war room. Its only job is to tackle deep fakes. Separately, there is talk of banning AI in campaigns. A bipartisan bill is in the works. It seeks to ban the use of AI to deceive voters. I guess a middle ground is needed, something between a ban and the Wild West, meaning regulation. Challenge number two is technical. How do you identify a deep fake? Take a look at this video from Russia. See if you can identify the deep fake Putin. Vladimir Vladimirovich, здравствуйте. Я студент и учусь в Санкт-Петербургском государственном университете. Хочу спросить, правда ли, что у вас много двойников? И еще, как вы относитесь к тем опасностям, которые несет в нашу жизнь искусственный интеллект и нейросети? Спасибо. Can you tell which one was fake? That's the problem. Most people agree that deep fakes should be removed, but to do that, you must be able to identify them. 
Some companies are working on it, like Sony, Nikon, and Canon. They're trying to give each photo and video a digital signature, sort of like a birthmark. If a clip has that signature, it is real. If not, it is AI generated. Of course, this technology is yet to be refined. It could be years before it's rolled out. So my point is, there is no immediate easy solution. Deep fakes will keep getting better, and bad actors will keep using them. Yes, some of them will be fact-checked and busted, but you cannot fact-check the entire internet. In Bangladesh's case, deep fakes slipped under the radar. After all, it wasn't really a factor. With or without AI, Sheikh Hasina was always the favorite. But imagine a closely fought election, like Biden versus Trump. In such cases, AI could be the difference. As voters, all we can do is be vigilant. If a video looks fishy or out of character, double check. Go to trusted news providers and most importantly, do not mindlessly forward it to dozens of WhatsApp groups.